Hello everyone, I hope you're well. I just wanted to put together a little video uh, just by way of introduction to what is going to be our small group focus uh, during the autumn term, which is already of underway of course, and we've started the term with uh, a get together as a church family on a, on a Wednesday night. But in October, we're gonna be getting together in small groups, um, which are gonna run fortnightly um, on a Wednesday, uh, maybe a Thursday, um, but more, de more details on that will follow. But what I wanted to do today was just talk a little bit about our focus, which is the book of Exodus. I realize that's quite a big challenge. It's a big book, uh, but I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to get some really good stuff out of our times engaging um, with the book of Exodus. Before I say uh, a few things about the book, just to set a little bit of context, I just want to tell you a little bit of uh, something that happened to me when I first came to Cheltenham. Um, basically, for about five years before I came to Cheltenham, I'd been studying the prophets. Uh, these, these were like really big, in-depth studies, um, which, which took a long time. I studied Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Lamentations, and I got through most of the minor prophets. Um, and it was like the Lord took me a journey through, through the prophets, a journey through those texts. And, and, and really that was a life-changing experience for me. I learned so much. And anyway, I was praying about, when I was on my way to thinking about whether I was going to be in Cheltenham or not, I was praying. And the Lord showed me a picture of a penny farthing. That might seem like a, a really strange thing, but that's what I saw. Uh, I don't know if you know what I mean, but it's one of those old-fashioned bikes with a big, massive, big back wheel and uh, or front wheel and uh, another small wheel and when i prayed about it I, I asked the lord what what that picture meant and i felt the lord say to me that my understanding of the prophets was like a really big wheel that i'd really spent a long time learning about the prophets but my understanding of the law was like the small wheel that i didn't really my my, my grasp of the law wasn't really that great and of course, Jesus often spoke about the law and the prophets, and it was the law and the prophets which testified about Jesus. So I felt the Lord was like challenging me to like put, put aside the prophets and begin uh, a study of the law. And then when I came to Cheltenham, the first uh, time I came here and I was walking around town and I was praying, asking God about whether he wanted me here, I was walking down by Fairview there and I went past the bike shop and I saw, I saw in the window a big penny farthing. And I sort of took that at that time to be a bit of a double confirmation. I felt like the Lord was just reminding me of that picture that he gave me, that he wanted me in Cheltenham, but also that he wanted me to engage uh, with a study of the law. That's the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch or the Torah, as they're sometimes called, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Now that's a long story and a very personal story, um, but really I'm trying to make a simple point that no matter how much at times we might feel that we grasp something or we've read something or we understand something, I feel like the Lord, certainly for me, was wanting to take me deeper into the law, deeper into what those first five books of the Bible are all about, um, in order that I, I can understand the good news about Jesus and the message of Jesus and the ministry and life of Jesus more fully. Um, so that, that's really why I've wanted to focus in on Exodus and get us to focus in on Exodus as a church, because I've spent uh, quite a long time looking at that book since I've been here amongst the others. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that I can distill some of that, of what I've learned through, through the last year. Um, and we can distill together uh, something of the meaning of the book of Exodus. So where do we start with a book like Exodus? Um, there's probably lots of ways and we're, we're going to tackle it fairly systematically. So we're going to go through it from beginning to end. And Dave is going to start um, at the beginning of October with a look at the uh, life of Moses. You know, when Moses was just a baby in the baskets and saved from death and how he became the leader of um, Israel and the Hebrew people in slavery. So that's going to be the first session. After that, Pete's going to be uh, taking a look at the plagues. And after that, Sarah's going to be um, looking at the story of the Passover, the great exodus of the Hebrew people out of slavery, out of Egypt, and towards the Promised Land, which is very exciting. Uh, then I'm going to be having a look at the Ten Commandments um, and introduce you to a bit beyond uh, the Ten Commandments, because the book of Exodus, yes, it concerns and records the Ten Commandments, but it also records these things called the Mishpatim, which are the judgments, the, all the, the numerous commands which follow the Ten Commandments. And we're going to be exploring those 
in some detail and um, also in some of our deeper sessions. We're going to have two deeper sessions on the Book of Exodus. One of those is going to be dedicated to looking at the Mishpatim. So I'm really hoping that's something new for you and that's something you're going to learn from. Um, after we've looked at uh, uh, the, the commandments, we're going to be looking in November. Carol's going to be taking some time looking at the tabernacle and exploring the meaning of the tabernacle because it's like this highly symbolic um, structure that God tells Moses and the Israelites to build in the wilderness. And of course, it was the point of, of encounter with God and the point of worship. And finally, we're going to be looking at the role of the priesthood. Um, which again, the book of Exodus goes into some detail over how the priests were commissioned to be in the service of God and how they um, were dressed and what they had to do and so on. So that's the sort of scheme that we're going to be following. We're going to be going looking at quite big blocks of the text. Uh, and I suppose the big question is, um, you know, why, why should we be doing this? Why is it good for us? apart from perhaps the reasons that I've said about my own personal sort of journey with this text, I think there's lots of reasons. And first of all, we should remember that all scripture is God breathed. And as Paul says to Timothy, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. So the word of God, whatever element, whatever area of the word we study, it's good for us. It's God breathed and it's gonna benefit us and it's gonna help us to learn and train us in the things of God. Um, so that's, that's reason enough, but there are other reasons because also what we see in the book of Exodus really is a, a great revelation of the character of God, the nature of who God is, um, how God works with his people. We see, we see how God works intimately with, with his people and is, is deeply concerned for his people and wants his people to come into freedom. Um, and we see how God rescues his people from oppression. And of course, everything in the book of Exodus, as with you know, the Old Testament generally, everything does point to the life, the ministry, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, you know, Jesus is the Passover lamb. Uh, the Passover lamb, the, the putting of the blood upon the doorpost, all pointed towards the cross. Um, that, you know, the blood that saves us from sin, that saves us from death. Uh, Jesus is the one who would fulfill the law that was given on Mount Sinai, that that very law was a witness to the one who would come, who would live a righteous life. And of course, everything in the tabernacle, all, all of that finery that we read of in the tabernacle, all of it uh, speaks, to, speaks about the ministry and speaks into the ministry of Jesus. And of course, Jesus is also our great high priest. Um, there's so, so there's so much to learn and so much that we're going to be able to take from and I hope apply to our lives and apply to the life of the church. So I hope you'll be able to join us for this journey. I am excited about it. I hope you are. We're going to be starting up small groups in October, as I've already said. They're going to run every two weeks and it'll be great if you'll be able to take part. And uh, of course, it's also worth saying that being part of a small group is also a lot more than just studying the Bible together. It's about being together. It's about eating together. It's about becoming uh, closer to one another. It's about fellowshipping with each other, praying for each other, being there for each other and growing in our relationships as a church. So there's, that, that, that's got to be a good thing. There's lots of benefits for us to have small groups as a church. And I sort of feel in some ways they should be the heartbeat of the church and where the life of the church really, really unfolds. So bless you all. Um, I hope you're, you're excited about our, our study, our coming study, and thank you for ti taking time to watch this video. Uh, more details will follow. I hope that's whet your appetite though, and God bless you and see you soon. Mm -hmm.